I think I am Turner. I think this is my last turn. But I think I was just re-upped. Okay. Good, e good evening, everybody. Um, I'm going to call the uh, Thursday, October 5th, 2023, meeting of the uh, Bangor Board of Appeals to, um, to order. Uh, my name is Ed Gould. I am chair of the board. And I will ask everybody to introduce themselves. And Rob, I'll start from my right. Rob Ballingall. I'm Jordan LaBeouf. Robin Perkins. Rachel Thompson. Thank you, everybody. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of the August 2nd and August 9th, uh, 2023 meetings, which have been in your packet. I hope everybody's had a chance to review them. Uh, does anyone want to make a motion? Motion to approve the August 2nd minutes. Thank you, Rachel. Second. Second to Robin. Thank you very much. Uh, any comments, questions, discussion, amendment to the minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 And the vote is unanimous. <clears throat> the uh, next item on the agenda is a public hearing on a request for a variance appeal for a reasonable accommodation under the Federal Fair Housing Act from City Ordinances Section 65-10 and 65-11 to allow ownership of chickens as emotional support animals. Uh, before we actually move on to the substance of that agenda, I wanna make a um, uh, disclosure. Uh, when I received the packet uh, for upcoming board meetings, uh, I always ask my uh, staff in my office to go through our files and make sure that we don't have a conflict with anybody that might be coming before the board. Uh, and when we did that, I realized that approximately 10 years ago, uh, I was involved in litigation representing a party that Ms. Martin had filed a lawsuit uh, against. Um, and so I wanted to make that disclosure for the uh, record. Uh, under the Bangor ordinances, that does not, uh, and, and if anybody wants to pursue this further, I'm happy to do that that does not represent a conflict of interest under the, um, uh, under the ordinances, but all Board of Appeal members are required to be fair uh, and unbiased. Uh, I recognize that that's an extremely subjective uh, standard, but, uh, oh, and I, I should also say that um, I have very little recollection uh, of the particulars of uh, that prior litigation that I was involved in. Yeah. Is that any better? Hey, okay. Ed, the yeah. microphones are only for the only recording. For, okay. It doesn't, they don't affect yeah, uh, uh, building. I'll, I'll try and speak up a little bit louder and hopefully it'll be better for you. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's for, for online as opposed to everybody in the room. Um. So I have very little recollection uh, of the um, uh, of the substance of that litigation, other than I do recall that involved a request for a reasonable accommodation. Uh, and I believe, although I stand to be corrected, I believe that the reasonable accommodation requested uh, was for a uh, service animal. Uh, and like I said, uh, I do not believe that that qualifies as a conflict of interest. Uh, under the uh, Bangor ordinance relating to conflicts. But like I said, we are, we are all, all have an obligation to be fair and unbiased. I believe that I can hear the evidence uh, in this matter and be fair and unbiased and just decide uh, the case as I see both the uh, facts and the law. However, Ms. Martin, I, I wanted to raise that uh, in case you have any uh, concerns about my impartiality uh, in sitting on this uh, appeal. And, and I also wanted to raise that issue for my fellow board members, if they have any uh, concerns about my ability uh, to serve. And I will abide by whatever decision that the uh, board may make. So Ms. Martin, if you have something you wanna say on that uh, issue, um, the floor is yours. I don't have any. Could you have her speak in the, into the mic? Actually, Ms. Mar, would you would you mind coming up to the um, the podium and speaking into the microphone? Thanks. Sir. And, and the the light should be on. 
at the at the podium when she, when the on. speaker yes, speaks. Okay. Yes, I don't have any concerns with that. Um, it wasn't regarding an emotional support animal. If it's the case that I'm thinking of, it was a accommodation for through Bangor Housing where they weren't accommodating um, uh, a third bedroom for a therapy room. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, does does anybody on the board want to discuss this or have any concerns? Nope. Okay, so I think we can then move forward. All right. Um, so that the way that we handle these appeals is that uh, the, uh, well, first of all, uh, in our packet that was provided to us, we have uh, both the application for the appeal and uh, also the support supporting information uh, provided by Ms. Martin, uh, and uh, also um, um, uh, a support letter. And there's also uh, confidential medical uh, information. And the way we ordinarily handle these matters is that uh, to discuss confidential uh, medical information, uh, we go into executive uh, session to discuss that. But Ms. Martin, I understand that that you want to waive that provision on behalf of uh, CJ and discuss in open session. Okay, uh, then then we we can do that. Uh, can, can I? Can okay, I have yeah. the floor. Um, I would just want to make sure that um, uh, if the applicant wants the medical information to be talked about in the public portion of the uh, of the hearing, that that we that uh, first of all, I would suggest that the board still not, those two pieces of paper that we mark confidential, that the board still not make those public because we don't need to. But also uh, I would like, um, it would be a, a good thing, I think, if the board asked uh, the applicant to uh, acknowledge that she understands that in the course of the the uh, the presentation and the deliberations that there's gonna be, there are going to be questions and answers and and discussion that reveal the information, the medical information that is confidential, and that that that's what she wants. That uh, and that I think that would be something that should go into the record that she understands that that's going to come out during questions and th that information, and that that's what you want to do, as opposed to have it talked about. Uh, privately in executive session. Right. Yes, I understand. I'm waiving my right to executive session and it's you're free to talk about his medical conditions and I'm, any questions that you have are willing to answer. And also just for the record, the the written information that you've provided yes. for the record, we feel that that you know, by statute and by ordinance uh, will remain confidential in the city's records. That's fine. And while you're there, the other thing that I want to make sure that we have on the record is uh, you, you've submitted guardianship papers Correct. reflecting the fact that you are CJ's guardian and have the legal right to, to speak on his behalf. Correct? Correct. Yes. And we do we do have the copy of the uh, guardianship letter, which is a part of the record. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Have we covered everything now, Dave? Um, sure. So I, I if if it's the appropriate time for you, I uh, I would like to kind of give the summary that I would like to do to try to make it easier for the parties. Sure. Um, Please. Okay. Um, so the, the federal fair housing act is meant to accommodate individuals with a handicap and section 165 11 capital E of our city code of ordinances deals with requests for reasonable accommodation under the fair housing act uh, and incorporates the fair housing act standards into our code. Um, uh, section 165.11e uh, states that the Board of Appeals uh, shall grant a waiver from the strict application of the terms of this chapter as a reasonable accommodation to any person who qualifies as handicapped as defined by the Fair Housing Act, where an accommodation is necessary to afford such person equal opportunity to use and enjoy a dwelling in conformity with the requirements of the Fair Housing Act. Uh, Part one of that same section says, uh, clarifies a reasonable accommodation is a change in some rule that is generally applicable so as to make its burden less onerous on the handicapped individual. Uh, uh, subpart two of the same section says, an accommodation is not reasonable if it would require a fundamental alteration in the nature of zoning 
or it would impose an undue financial or administrative burdens on the city of Bangor. So uh, there are three elements in there that the applicant is gonna need to satisfy that I'll get to in a moment. But with regard to the, the presentation and the, and the, the public participation, there are, there are gonna be certain burden shifting uh, components that may come into play. The burden is on the applicant to show that uh, he or she has satisfied the requirements of section 165 uh, 11E. If the applicant initially satisfies this burden, uh, the burden would then shift to the other parties to show that the requirement has not been met. As an example, uh, that, that third, uh, that whether the accommodation is reasonable, uh, that if the applicant satisfies that burden, the, then the, it would, the burden would shift to the other parties if there are uh, other parties to show that the accommodation is not reasonable. Um, so there, the three elements that the applicant is gonna need to satisfy to, uh, to the board's satisfaction is number one, that the applicant or person, in this case, uh, C.J. Martin, is handicapped under the Fair Housing Act. Uh, handicap is defined as any physical, mental, or psychological disorder that impairs a major life activity. Uh, major life activity is defined very broadly. It would include things such as caring for oneself, performing manual tasks, walking, seeing, hearing, speaking, breathing, learning, working. Um, the second element that would need to be satisfied uh, by the applicant is that the accommodation is necessary to afford that person an equal opportunity to use and enjoy a dwelling. And the third uh, element that would need to be satisfied is that the accommodation is reasonable. And this is likely the element where the burden shifting may come into play. Um, the property in this case uh, is 201 Buck Street which is a 0 0.37 acre parcel of land located in the URD one district. That's the urban residence, residential district one. The accommodation requested is from the requirements of sections 6510 and 6511 of the city code of ordinances. Section 6510 says that no person shall keep any fowl, goats, sheep, cattle, or swine of any kind within the urban developed area of the city. And I would note that the URD1 district is within the urban developed area of the city. Uh, section 65-11 states that fowl, goats, sheep, cattle, or swine of any kind shall not be kept in the cellar, basement, or attic of any occupied residential structure in the city of Bangor. It goes on to say the city health officer shall have the authority to remove for uh, to order removal of fowl, goats, sheep, cattle, or swine of any kind from any premises in the city, regardless of location, whenever the health officer finds that keeping of such animals at the premises threatens the public health. So uh, the issue of how the applicant wants accommodation from that section will have to be fleshed out during the hearing. Um, uh, on the issue of whether the accommodation is reasonable, um, the city's land development code has general provisions regarding the urban developed area uh, located at section 165-87 of the city code of ordinances. And that section says, states, the districts under this article are established to protect and enhance the use and development of those areas of the city, which are within the presently built up urban service area. Use provisions in those areas reflect to a large degree the historical use and development standards necessarily, necessarily reflect traditional development patterns and the minimum standards of previous ordinances. Nevertheless, these districts requirements, these district requirements allow for certain current market conditions and even promote dynamic and innovative reuse and develop redevelopment where appropriate as well as fulfilling the long recognized value of the prevention of overcrowding, the balancing of activity with necessary services and the reduction of the destructive conflicts between competing uses in order to make such areas viable, safe and healthy for human occupancy and activity and to protect property values for the individual and the community. Uh, the URD1 district is established and allowed 
and, and the allowed uses are set forth in section 165-8 88 of the land land development code uh, section 165-88a has a statement of purpose uh, which says the urban residence one district is established to enhance and protect the essential established characteristics of certain traditional low density residential areas of mostly single family detached dwellings or where such de development is desired to promote and encourage a suitable environment for family life um, the permitted uses in, in the urban URD1 district are set forth in section 165.88C. All of these uh, ordinance provisions are in your packet, by the way. And um, those um, permitted uses include, I'm not gonna go over all the, uh, that whole thing, but just they include in general, one family detached dwellings, home occupations and professions, community living arrangements, small daycare center if it operated at a dwelling by a resident of the dwelling, accessory dwelling units with conditions, minor essential service facilities with conditions, accessory uses on the same lot and customarily incidental to and subordinate to the listed allowed uses or to an approved condition. The conditional uses allowed in URD1 are set forth in section 165D and include places of worship and nursing homes meeting specified requirements if they're located on major arterial street and have an impervious surface ratio of no more than 0 0.30 and boarding houses if located on a major arterial street. Um, the way that ordinance is set up that any uses that aren't listed are not permitted. Um, the use I understand on this uh, parcel is a single family residence, I believe. So that's kind of the summary and overview I wanted to share uh, at the beginning here. Thanks, Dave. Do any of the board members have any questions for Dave about the procedural framework we'll be following tonight? Okay. So let's move on to the um, uh, public portion of the hearing. And we always hear from the applicant first. So Ms. Martin, if you'd like to come up to the uh, podium, state your name. We know who you are and we, we know the address, but still for the record, if you'd state your name and the address and then you can make your presentation. Uh, I don't, my name is Amy Martin. I am at 201 Buck Street in Bangor. I'm not sure what you want for a presentation. I mean, everything that I've provided for you kind of outlines why we're asking for these chickens. Um, they provide support for CJ. Um, they've been a part of his life since um, March of this year. Um, they've turned his life around completely 180 from the past two years. He had been suffering uh, quite heavily from the effects of COVID. He was very withdrawn, very socially isolated. Um, as you know, most people could do Zoom meetings and still see friends and things of that nature. He doesn't have the ability to do that because he's blind. Um, so he was much more isolated than the average person. So after researching, um, after about a year, I started researching things that I could do to possibly help him overcome some of these effects that he was suffering from. And that's where we came across um, chickens. And they, they really did do uh, just a complete 180 on him emotionally. Um, and they've just, they changed his whole world. So that's why we're asking for this variance to be granted. Do any of the board members have questions for Ms. Martin? We have the chickens currently, yes. We have six right now. And I only, I, the only reason that we acquired the chickens is because everything I read online, um, according to Housing Urban Development, the FHA, um, ADA, things like that, they said that you could have them already um, in a dwelling and then apply for um, a reasonable accommodation. And everything I could find online only referenced landlord tenant situations. I really couldn't find much on applying to the city. Um, the only thing it said that was um, municipalities were under the same rules. So I reached out to the city and I, I tried for three months to get that information. And in that time, we did acquire the chickens. Certainly. Other questions? I have a couple of questions, okay. Ms. Martin. Um, first of all, uh, could you describe for us the um, general neighborhood? I understand from Dave that uh, the property is a single family house. Is that right? Correct. Yes. And what I also understand from your application that you're near Bass Park. 
Yes, directly across the street from the horse stables. Okay. And could you just describe generally the layout of the houses and other buildings around you? Sure. So I'm right on the corner. Um, so I live on a corner lot uh, directly across. If you're stepping out my front door on the left is um, Dean's Car Care, which is uh, a business. Um, there are two houses on that side of the street as well. Um, behind me are um, my neighbors that live behind me. I have a fenced in backyard, which separates my yard from theirs. Um, they also have the same size parcel as myself. Um, and then to the immediate right of me is um, my other neighbor. We are separated by, I have a large garden, plus there's a huge hedge of uh, lilac bushes. Um, and then the neighbor beyond that, I don't see much because where my fence, where the fence meets the corner of those properties, I'm in the front. Um, my neighbors, the Hamels are in the back. And then the other two properties I barely see because the fence separates them. And do you have a rooster? No, no roosters. Um, one of the one of the questions I had is, uh, well, I'll save that for last. Um, have you ever made any attempt to have other type of assistive animals for CJ? Yes. Could, could yeah, you describe we, that for us? Um, no, no other type of assistive animals in this sense. Um, he's never really needed them. So this is the, my first attempt at it and discussing it with his doctor, we went through, she thought he could have a pig. Um, and I said, well, pigs aren't allowed in the city either, but for the, for the reasons of the cost, the maintenance, the amount of effort and energy, it would take him to not only take care of it, but, um, the mental, the mental, uh, exhaustion that he would, that, that he, it would be a toll on him. It would be less, um, therapeutic and more uh, draining than anything. Okay. Um, another question I have is you're asking for a variance from both section 65-10 and 65-11 uh, and 65-11 relates to uh, keeping animals either in the cellar basement or attic of an occupied residential um, structure. So where are the where are the chickens currently? Kept? Currently, they're in the backyard in a fenced in area. They have a chicken coop, um, but initially they were in the home because they were too young to go outside. When they're when they're little chicks, they need to be in the home. So that covered the time. If if he loses two or three for whatever reason, he's down to one or two, um, and he needs to um, get more chickens for whatever reason. That would cover the that specific clause would cover the time that it would take to brood them up to an appropriate age to put them outside again. So your your intent would be that if, uh, well, actually, let me ask you, do, do you plan to have any more chickens than the current six that you have? No. Okay. No. <clears throat> but your plan would be that if, you know, something should happen to one of them, that you would, would get a chick who would need to be raised inside until they were old enough to... To join the flock outside, correct. Okay. All right. Why did you determine six? Uh, initially, we were going to go with um, two or three, maybe four at most. So we had acquired six initially, um, and they were barnyard mix chickens, which means they were not, they were like a, a dog would be a mutt, um, and they were unsexed chickens. So we didn't know if we were going to have roosters. We did end up having four roosters. Um, so we did rehome those four. And in the time that we realized they could be, we acquired four more to cover our bases in case two or three of those turned out to be um, roosters. But six is a is a decent size for, um, we live in harsh winter conditions and they can't survive on their own. And that's why his doctor also wrote the prescription for chickens, plural, because she knows that they're a flock animal. They can't survive on their own. Um, they wouldn't make it through the winter and an isolated chicken is a depressed chicken, which means it's not a therapeutic chicken for him. <laughs> Thank you. Sir. Any, any other questions? Yeah, I, I do have a couple of questions. Um, Amy, do you have other pets in the house? We do. What do you have? We have a cat, a dog, and I have several fish tanks. Oh, nice. That's great. I, I didn't hear several what? Fish tanks. Fish, okay. Yes. Thank you. 
aquariums. Um, and I just want to clarify with you and with the board and with Dave, it's appropriate to ask questions about materials that were included in this session that are labeled confidential. Yes, because the applicant want, yes, wants it that, that. way. Great. Yeah. Just want to make sure. Yeah. So you had mentioned a few places in the materials and here that the physician particularly prescribed chickens. Correct. In the letter I see from the physician here, I see phrases like, I am prescribing an emotional support animal and that chickens are a reasonable solution. What I don't see is a specific phrase that says, I am prescribing chickens for this purpose. So I was hoping you could talk a little bit about that and where that either if is another piece of paper that says I'm prescribing chickens, or if you're interpreting prescription of an ESA for which chickens would be appropriate as a prescription specifically for chickens. Uh, I believe it says chickens at the end. Which fourth is the very end of the prescription that she wrote. I need to find it. Ms. Martin, may I read from the letter? Sure, sure, yes. I'm prescribing an ESA that will assist in coping with his disabilities. Above, I see Amy is requesting the ESA be chickens. She has researched options and makes a strong argument for them, given his specific symptoms. What I'm missing is, is her going on to say, as a physician, I am prescribing chickens specifically as an ESA. What the way that, uh, yeah, that's, so is there anywhere where a doctor is specifically saying I am prescribing chickens? Isn't that what you just read? Here she says, I am prescribing an ESA. Right. That could be any number of other animals, correct? No. Okay. Specifically related to, that's why it goes on to talk about chickens. If it was another animal, she would specifically have to state what that animal is. So by federal guidelines, if she writes that prescription for a specific ESA, it has to name that animal. So she would have to say it could be this, this, or this. It doesn't. It just says chickens. So you're saying that in order for a physician to write a prescription for an emotional support animal, they must specify the specific animal. Correct. And they are doing so here by saying that you have researched chickens and it seems like a reasonable option. Yes. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, Ms. Martin, anything Ed, else? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, ahead. Ed. Could I ask a question? Uh, I just want to make sure that um, that this is fleshed out uh, because your application requests of uh, an accommodation both from 6510 and 6511, and 6511 says that uh, fowl, goat, sheep, cattle, or swine of any kind should not be kept in the cellar, basement, or attic. Um, of an occupied residential structure in the city of Bangor. Is that the part that you're seeking an accommodation from? Um, I may need an accommodation at some point for that. If the weather conditions get too harsh, I may need to bring them in for a night or two. Are you seeking that accommodation now? Yes, it's included in the... Okay. The, I believe so. Is there a reason you're asking? Yes. Okay. Because... I wanted to make because the section has other sentences in it. For example, the next sentence says the city health officer shall have the authority to order removal of fowl, goat, sheep, cattle, or swine of any kind from any premises in the city, regardless of location, whenever the health officer finds that keeping of such animals at the premises threatens the public health. Right. Are you leaving that sentence alone? You don't need a, an accommodation from that sentence. You're not trying to take away the the public health officer's ability to issue one of those orders, are you? Um, I think under the federal guidelines, the, I, I believe that would apply. So you're seeking an accommodation from that sentence as well? Uh, I'm assuming if it's if it's in there, then yes. Okay. Is there a reason I shouldn't? Is there? A... Well, <laughs> <laughs> I mean... I, I mean, I don't... <laughs> I'm not your attorney. I just uh, there. I'm not. I'm not sure it's that it's needed for you to seek an accommodation from 6511. But if that's what you are seeking, right, I'm just the only reason. Like I said, the only reason I included 6511 is to cover us in case there is extreme weather. Like we had negative 40 degrees this past spring. 
if I have to bring the chickens in for a day or two, I don't want that to be a reason for you or the city to come and say, hey, you had them inside. You're not allowed to do that. We're taking them away. It just covers the bases. And I know that the city probably wouldn't do that, but they could. And I'm just trying to eliminate the possibility that that could happen. Okay. So, yeah, and I, <clears throat> this was a concern that I had too. And I think what the point that, that Dave is addressing here is that you're simply looking for a variance to allow you to have chickens inside for a limited period of time, either you know, to raise the chicks or, you know, if the weather's really bad. Extenuating circumstances where they would have to come right. in. Correct. And not be in violation of the ordinance. Correct. But you're not seeking exemption from the provisions of, of the ordinances that say, if having the chickens inside presents a public health hazard right that the the city wouldn't have any power to enforce that that's right. not what that's not what i'm saying no okay no all right no if you found i had 90 chickens in my basement i would hope you would do something about it <laughs> okay <laughs> anybody else dave we got those bases covered yes thanks okay. anything else you'd like to say ms martin if anybody has any other questions okay i think we're all set okay um, so the board will entertain uh, any uh, comments or presentation by anyone uh, that's here that is in support of the application for the variance. Yes, ma'am, come on up. And when you get up to the uh, podium, just please state your name and your address. Yes, absolutely. Hi, my name is M. Kajandro. I live at 242 Third Street, which is like a block away from Amy and CJ's property at the corner of Buck and Third. Um, and I'm just here as a neighbor to say I'm 100% in support of the chickens. Um, to be honest, they have, they're not a nuisance. We don't hear them. We don't see them. She keeps an immaculately well-developed yard um, that is fenced in. Um, she did note that she had those roosters for a little bit. I personally miss the rooster call every now and then, um, but they, it was a short period of time where it was there. Um, but I think besides that, we as neighbors would never have known that there were chickens in the backyard. And I think that as a parent myself and knowing how fiercely Amy takes care of CJ at home, um, this is a great way for him to be able to feel socially and emotionally well supported. And in speaking with other neighbors in the area, obviously I can't officially speak for them, um, but in conversations, everybody that I have talked to seems rather on board um, with what they're doing over there. So I would just ask that the board take into consideration all that this does do for CJ, especially because he can't get out and walk a dog. I have a dog, I have a cat, they're a lot of work. Um, they can be challenging to deal with, especially if you have limited um, capacity, visually impaired, things like that. Um, so I think that this is a great fit and it has not been disruptive to our lives as neighbors in any way. And I just wanted to make that heard as an advocate for, for what she's trying to do here for CJ. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions from any board members? Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, anyone else in support of the uh, application that would like to make a presentation? Good evening. I'm John Nadeau. I live in Glenburn, Maine, so nowhere near Bangor. And we can have chickens in Glenburn. So I can address some of the issues of chickens because I owned a flock. I raised chickens for about 12 years when my kids were younger. But the reason I'm here is I'm a volunteer with the Adaptive Outdoor Education Center. I'm the head coach for the Horizon Ski Program. CJ skis with me and has skied with me for five years, except for last year. Last year was a challenge. CJ was a different young man, more withdrawn, very more difficult to communicate with, just wasn't himself. He was impacted negatively by all of the effects of COVID. I mean, yes, we hear about it all the time, the impacts on children. There is a lot of impact on children. He was adversely impacted. I understand it, getting having raised chickens, because chickens are friendly. They really are. If you hand feed a chicken, that you are now mother hen. They will come to you. They coo, they make soft noises. So if you're visually impaired in your own backyard, you can find your chickens. You always know where they are because you can hear them. And if you call them and you've got grain, they will come to you. It's a very bonding experience. So I get it. He can care for something. Instead of constantly being cared for, he's now in a caring capacity. That is huge. 
that is a huge benefit for him. So yes, I at strong advocate of Amy having chickens for CJ. That is awesome. It's a great idea. And if it's no impact to the neighbors, what's the harm? Yeah, and you six chickens, you could put in a large dog crate and bring them inside in the wintertime. They wouldn't even have to move around the house. They actually would fit in a large dog crate easily. So you could still maintain an immaculate home and put your chickens back out when it's not 40 below zero. Been there, done that. It works. Any questions? <laughs> Any questions from the board? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in support of the application? I couldn't hear the instructions, but you want my place of residence and name. And your, so your, your name and... I'm a little disappointed. You don't have anything here for the hearing impaired. My hearing aids are in the shop being repaired. I would have thought that I could have, could have heard what was going on tonight, but it's very difficult. I appreciate that, sir. I apologize. These don't that. work. Why do you have them up here? Well, they, they work for people that are online. Oh, what about the people that took the time to come here? Well, it, as that, I said, okay. sir, I, I, I apologize, but I hope you can still participate. I read the article in the paper in reference to this young man's situation. Oh, and actually, sir, I, I apologize. Could you state your name in, oh, in residence, please? Richard Bell, Lakeview Plantation, Maine. 269 uh, Main Road. All right. Thank, thank you very much. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. I read the article in the paper and I'm thinking with all the different things that are going on in this world uh, and, this, and I asked us to meet this young man and his mother. I called her ahead of time. I was lucky enough to, to get her phone number. I go over, she invited me over and I took him a bag of chicken feed instead of a bottle of wine and met these people they're they're champions in my book and with all the evil and unrest that's in this world the city council's got to have more to do than than to go after this family for him wanting to pacify his his physical conditions this is something that can't be helped so if there's something that helps this young guy along the way, great. And I, I think it's ridiculous that it's even an issue. Now, I heard your explanation of the different statutes and so forth and ordinances and laws. And we become a nation of rules and laws that don't seem to make much sense. They don't seem to fit the situation. And Bangor, Maine is rural Maine. It's not a city. We don't even have a city in the state of Maine. Portland's not a city. Philadelphia, Boston, places like that. Miami, which I lived in for years, and L.A., those are cities. And there's exceptions to every rule. And across the street from, from their residence is a perfect example. You got a horse track there, but there's money involved. There's money in it for everybody, except for these people. I bet they don't even go to the racetrack. I do, but I'll bet they don't. And when I look the situation over, it's fenced in to the point where a city official or a drone or something would have to invade their privacy in order to even, to even see those chickens. They don't, they don't car and they don't make noises to speak of. You'd have to have better hearing in mind, but and the accommodations they have, they grow every vegetable known to man in their backyard. And I hope there's no ordinance against that because I just gave her up if there is. But the chickens, I was amazed. I've been around farm animals and so forth all my life. I grew up on a, working on a 500 acre produce farm and they had some chickens and pigs and goats. We're not talking about that. These the grounds this lady keeps the grounds cleaned up she didn't know i was coming and there was no chicken poop visible and i'm a pretty observant guy i'm in the cleaning business and i spot things that other people don't see and it would amaze me and she explained that you know she has a little system where she keeps it up because chickens don't run around pooping every two seconds and it can be cleaned up uh 
and it was. I, I was amazed. And this wasn't something that she was rehearsed or anything. So in order to, to for anybody to even see that, they can't see it from the street. They can't hear the chickens. They're not they're not roosters, they're they're chickens. And I think it's a, sh a shame that the city is spending a lot. I know you have to have laws and ordinances and this and that, but good Lord, I, I get around the city every day and I see the hypodermic needles. I can't go sit in the city park because the seats are contaminated with feces from leaking out of some street person's pants. I mean, that's nasty. Those chickens are doing just fine. And this young man here, when I got there, he was filling his chicken feeders which are tubes, nice clean tubes. And there wasn't even any, any uh, markings on those tubes. I was amazed, the place was spotless. And it was obviously, he was, he didn't have to be told, hey, get ready, Richard's coming over and his wife to, to see you feed your chickens. I mean, this was a, a, something that he does on a regular basis from what his mother tells me. And I believe her seems like a very credible person. And this is a lifestyle for him. And it's my understanding that he volunteers here and there and helps the best he can. I mean, that's a productive guy for his, with his disabilities. I'm proud to know him. Uh, I don't want to rant and rave and carry on. Usually you've got to get the hook to get me off off the stage here but I I'm asking the city council to to look at the big picture you know and it's not a one shoe fits them all with any law we've had plenty of exceptions made in the state of Maine and in the city of Bangor and every other municipality in reference to what is law and what is ordinance uh, and there are exceptions made and I think in this particular case, if he had goats and they were bashing their head against the fence that's on their property and disturbing the neighbors, or they had a mule baying all day long, that'd be another thing. Or if they had an alligator or something dangerous, it's not the case. And I, I look at him first and anything else secondary when it comes to making the decision if you're put in that position. And all, uh, I, I, I didn't come here to scold the council or anybody else. I just wanted to get this off my chest because it's been bothering me after I witnessed the way this young man lives and how that affects his, his well being and mental health. I say, hooray for him. And maybe you could take that into consideration when you're making your decision. So that's all I have to say. And thank you. For allowing me to speak. Hey, hey, hang on a second, sir. Just from just as a point of clarification, we're not the city council. We're well, you're of, we're the board of you're appeals. The board of appeals. Excuse and, me. No, that's okay. And uh, our jurisdiction is to uh, hear and consider applications for a variance from the ordinances that the city council passes. So that's why we're here tonight. And I just. Okay. Want, want I, to get that on the record. Thank you for the I didn't have <laughs> time to review everything, and you never go to anything not being prepared. That's not me. That's right. No, but no, I spent no. too much time preparing for other things during the day, and I didn't have time to read the ordinances and 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 try to absorb them. Well, there's there's nobody here with the possible exception of Dave that has encyclopedic knowledge of the uh, Bangor City ordinances. So, you know, nobody would expect. Yeah, I kind of picked up on that. Yeah. <laughs> so do, do any of the other board members have any questions? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else who would like to speak on behalf of the application? All right. Is there anybody? It, oh, go ahead. You're going to go to Zoom. All right. Is there anybody online that would like to speak? Uh, in favor of the application. Uh, if you do, just um, use the feature where you can wave your hand and we'll recognize you. Uh, it looks like, uh, let me start at the top with, I believe it's Alicia Moore. Yes, hi, can you hear me? We can hear you, yep. 
Okay, great. Um, yeah, so my name's Alicia Moore. I live at 1918th Street in Bangor, and um, I work as a social worker, I'm a licensed social worker. And I just wanted to share when I saw the article about CJ's chickens, um, as a social worker, I work with quite a few people who have emotional support animals. And I also work with several people, because I work all around the greater Bangor area, who have chickens. And I think my initial thought was chickens, that's interesting. But then I thought about some of the people that I work with who have a variety of disabilities who have chickens. And I was thinking back to how much the chickens have really impacted and changed their lives and how I have some people I go to see. And when I visit them, we always talk about chickens. They show me their chickens. They walk me around and I get to see them. Um, and I can see the, the big impact it makes on their life. And so I just wanted to speak in favor of chickens as an emotional support animal um, for CJ or for someone else who may need that. Okay, thank you. Do any yeah. board members have any questions for Ms. Moore? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Megan, I hope I pronounced your name correctly, Sakara. Hello. Hello, everybody. My name is Megan Sakara. Um, my address is 11164 Bertrand uh, Avenue, uh, Granada Hills, California. I currently live in California, but I was born and raised in the Bangor area. And I uh, had the privilege of meeting CJ when he was about nine years old. Um, I'm just going to share a really quick story. Um, a little bit prior to COVID, I brought CJ to my to my camp, and um, there were wild ducks on the pond, and it was a mama duck and a bunch of baby ducks. And um, so this mother and baby came right up to CJ and just allowed her to allowed CJ to play with these ducks, and and right away I just knew that he had a very special connection with these ducks, and the fact that they they trusted CJ with her young was just so incredible to me. And, you know, since then, we've called him the animal whisperer. And he's just, he has a special touch. Anybody that knows CJ knows that he is just the kindest, most gentle, most giving human ever. And I just want to say that when, when Amy said that she was going to get him chickens because of COVID, I just knew it was a wonderful idea. And not only does CJ benefit, but those chickens are going to benefit. I mean, it's just such a beautiful symbiotic relationship. And I support you 100%. And Thank you for, for all you're doing, Amy, for CJ, and that's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. The, do any board members have any uh, questions? All right. Is, is there anyone else on Zoom that would like to make a presentation? All right. Hearing none. Uh, we'll move on to the portion of the uh, public hearing where we would ask if there's anyone who wants to speak in opposition to the application, call them up to the podium. My name is Melanie Hamill. I live at 198 Lincoln Street in Bangor. I, uh, first off, want to make sure this is no uh, offense to them. I am their neighbor in the backyard. Um, we have two properties, actually. They're not combined properties. Um, we are actually behind her. I think our main concern um, for these chickens is if it opens up for chickens to be allowed in the city limits, then this is going to open up the ordinance to other animals that need to be of uh, support to other people. If one says, yes, okay, for her to have chickens, then somebody in an apartment's going to want chickens or goats or uh, I can't see that changing a little variance for just chickens um, is going to help this. I I feel that um, it should affect all animals that are included in this ordinance, um, not just one particular. Um, my husband and I, he, who could not be here tonight, um, our only concern is since we have lived on our property since 1997, and this is the first year that we have ever had rats on our property. We have trapped nine. Um, I believe 
Amy has spoken to my husband. She herself has trapped over 12 uh, rats on her property. Um, we have never had them before. Maybe mice, yes, but never rats. Um, my emotion, uh, emotion support for me was seeing the birds come in my yard. I can no longer feed them because of the rats. Um, so I have nothing. I work from home all day. Um, granted, I don't hear the chickens, but I think they should be, if this pass passes, that there should be a limit on how many you should be able to have on your property, um, considering it's not a large property uh, where she has them. Um, they do run around. They have been out around her pool that she has. Um, they're not completely fenced in. She has them fenced in her backyard to run around. And I have no problem of them having the chickens, but just limiting on how many they can have um, and other animals that are going to be able to be approved if this passes, um, a variance passes on this ordinance. Um, so that is my concern. They have been great neighbors. Um, I, I, CJ is wonderful. He's a smart young man. Um, so I, I wish the best for them, but that is our, my husband and my concerns is our, the rats and what it's opening up for other animals to be of emotional support. Thank you for listening. Sure. Hang, hang on just a sec, ma'am. Any questions from any board members? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to uh, speak in opposition to the application? Yeah, <laughs> I, I want to take care of the folks. So nobody, nobody here that's uh, present in the uh, chambers? All right. Um, so is there anyone on Zoom that would like to speak in opposition to the application? And please raise your electronic hand. And I see um, Nikki Sakara has her hand up. Do you, do you want to speak in opposition? Uh, no, I was hoping I, I was having some technical difficulties on on my part and was unable to raise my hand earlier um, and was wondering if you would like me to speak now in favor or would like me to wait until later. Dave, because because of the te technical problems, is there anything preventing us from reopening the case to allow a statement in favor? I think the chair can do that. OK, then, then we'd be happy to hear from you. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Luke Zakara. Uh, I'm calling from my mother Nikki's computer. Um, I live. I'm currently in Eddington right now, um, but I've uh, I've I live in Freiburg. But I'm you know I come to this area often because I have uh, family in the area, and um, one person whom I consider family in this area is CJ. Um, I've known him for most of my life. And, um, you know, I, from what I've heard from others, uh, all the positive things they've said, I can only say again, um, he's one of the kindest people I've known in my entire life. Um, I always, I, I hold him with great deal of compassion and respect for all that he has accomplished. Um, and I just want to say, um, with regards to the slippery slope argument, I often hear is that I would only hope that that you would um, that th this this isn't about just um, you know opening the floodgates so to speak. It's I, I would hope that anyone coming to you with sit with CJ's circumstances and needs um, would receive the compassion and understanding that they are asking for from you today. Um, this isn't about special exceptions to the rule. This is about taking into consideration people's um, unique needs, um, because we're all coming from different places. And so we ought to be met uh, where we are and, you know, take people's unique situations into consideration. Um, you know, we're, you know, we're a community. We ought to take care of each other. We ought to keep that in mind. Um, and if this is something that can so positively impact CJ's life, I hope that you all will extend him the consideration and compassion that he so much deserves. Thank you. Any board members with any questions? Okay, thank you. Uh, one last call for folks on Zoom that want to speak in opposition to the application. 
And I see Martha Ward has raised her hand. Go ahead. Hi, uh, Martha Ward and Chris Ward at 202 Lincoln Street in Bangor. Um, not necessarily speaking in opposition, um, but just wanted to make sure that our concerns, um, similar to Melanie's, um, are, my husband's been in that home since 1970, uh, 1975, I believe, and um, just concerned about any potential rodents, um, any potential runoff. Uh, our property sits lower. Um, so in rain times, there is runoff into our backyards. Um, and then also echoing the concern about any additional animals. Chickens are fine. And I agree that, you know, if there was a limit to the number, um, that would really be our question or concern. Okay. A any questions from board members? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, anyone else on Zoom that would like to speak in opposition? to the application. Hearing none. Um, and I just wanna make sure there's there's nobody present here that wants to speak in opposition. Okay. Jeff, could you provide the position of the city? Um, Jeff Wallace, Director of Code Enforcement. Um, position of the city will be much shorter. Um, there is no process available as per ordinance for for me to approve such a thing. Um, if there were, we'd uh, you know examine that process a long time ago and we'd all be doing something uh, more enjoyable tonight. Um, but as Dave discussed uh, in his outline, um, the ordinance puts this kind of decision on, on you guys. Um, simply due to the location of the property. Um, chapter 65 uh, in the urban development area, um, the applicable term was uh, amended in 1998, um, which was long before I was uh, thinking about codes. So I, I cannot speak to the, uh, you know, the reasoning behind it beyond uh, quality of life issues. Um, and thinking about the meeting there, I mean, that's kind of hard to describe other than, and this is the best I could do is there are country noises and there are urban noises, you know, concerts, traffic, sirens are the, are the kind of things that you, uh, you hear in the uh, urban area and animals, four wheelers, gunshots, I don't know, you know, other things you hear out um, in the urban. Um, and I think you know, sort of the reasoning um, behind that was a, a choice of, uh, I mean, a recognition of a choice that, you know, when people choose uh, to live in certain places, they have uh, different choices. Um, again, I don't have a whole lot of, you know, insight into it beyond that. This is really kind of the first uh, foray into, into this type of thing. Um, Another aspect, um, you know, behind the reasoning for the ordinance, obviously, is a, uh, a public health concern. Um, I've got uh, public health director Patty Hamilton here who can speak much more eloquently um, than I could in regards to any public health aspects, if that's um, a question on your part. Uh, one kind of just sort of wrap up note on on one thing I heard um, in regards to 6511, specifically basements, cellars, and attics. Um, you know, that to me, that's it's sort of quite literal, and especially hearing the gentleman say the, the stuff about the, you know, six could fit in a dog crate. So absolutely, um, you know, six in a dog crate and inside and, you know, not in a basement cellar or attic, you know, a foyer, a living room, wherever they may be. Um, absolutely, that would be, you know, sort of my interpretation of it. Um, and certainly we don't, uh, we don't have active enforcement, you know, on, on that sort of aspect. Um, again, uh, we're, I'm charged with, you know, enforcing ordinance as written and as written, I, I just, you know, don't have the ability to approve it. Um, and the uh, the process to approve it is is spelled out, and that's why we're all here tonight. Thank you, Jeff. Questions for Jeff? Can, do you think the chickens are causing the rats? 
I don't know. I do know um, this is not the only area in town that is having a rat problem. There are other areas of town where chickens aren't in the equation. Um, rats are attracted to a food source. I'm not a rat expert, uh, but it was said here, there's significant food source across the street. Um, there's, again, there's other rat problems in town, not very far from there. I, I, I can't tie the rats, honestly, to, to that, um, especially never being in, in CNN and, and only hearing that they're kept in pristine conditions. I, what I know about rats and the experience, I would, you know, based on what I know, I would say not really at this point. Um, surprisingly, we're finding out um, tall grass is a attraction of, of rats and you know that's not in the equation tonight um but no i i don't i can't say the chickens are causing the rats other questions for jeff well actually this is for the um the city's presentation right now jeff i have a question and you may not be able to answer it uh but you touched on it a couple of moments ago i mean it, it struck me odd as odd that 6511 says you can't keep fowl in the cellar basement of, or attic of any residential structure. But, you know, I guess the converse of that is you can keep them in the living room. Everywhere else I read yeah. it as, yeah. I mean, it's, are you aware of any reason why that distinction's made in the ordinance? I don't. Okay. Um, and do they actually happen to say on there at the top? Sometimes they say when they're amended, and I bet that's even older than 98 uh not not on my copy oh okay uh, oh, wait a minute no not on my copy I, honestly the i i think there was probably some it's hard <laughs> to say but back in the day i think there might have been a reason for that um but it, it is definitely odd that they would describe those parts of the building only yeah okay but thanks probably because i live in a house that was built in 1859 and it has stalls in the basement ah, what? Hmm, interesting <laughs> okay for coal or animals when i digress <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> All right. thank, thank you jeff i appreciate it patty is there anything you wanted to say on this good evening patty hamilton i'm the public health director got a little shorter for um the city of angor um just that there are certainly diseases associated with chickens which probably people are familiar if you've ever gone to one of those um backyard uh you know events where children can pet animals and so forth they have hand washing statement stations they're kept clean for a reason they keep up the manure they take care make sure that you wash your hands carefully going in and going out some of them even have um, places where you can make sure that you wash your shoes so that you don't track diseases to other locations and those things are like salmonella campylobacteria um uh psittacosis things like that that are transmitted primarily by contact or inhaling some feces or coming in contact with the birds themselves. Avian flu has recently been, H1, H5N1 has been uh, something of concern the past couple of years. I did look to see where the status of that was recently. It was in, um, uh, it was considered at rate of high and it was just downgraded to moderate. So that's less of a concern, but there is recommendations that you keep your fowl um, carefully caged and separated so there's no contact with wild birds because that's where the contact comes into play. Um, other considerations have already been spoken about. Um, noise that's usually associated with the roosters. Um, odor has to do with the cleanliness. Pests are mentioned in most multiple places when you spoke about the rats. I think it is hard. We have had rats in the city before. There are rats lots of places. It's hard to say they're associated with one thing. But again, it would be the condition and how you keep up. Um, rats come for food. So if there's grain left out, that's, you know, easy for them. So they might be more attracted for that reason. So. Questions for Patty? Well, it, 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 actually, yeah. Um, are the, Patty, do, do you know if there are other areas of the city outside of urban residential district where 
uh, people are allowed to have what I'll call backyard chickens? I don't believe there are any chickens allowed in the city. Good. Are there? Are there? Oh. Yeah. Jeff can speak to that better than okay. Don't don't go away okay. because I have a question about that. Yeah, yeah, Jeff, if you could address that, that'd be helpful. Right, Jeff. Um, there are in the you the uh, app the, the uh, applicable ordinance says in the urban uh, developed areas. So in the areas that aren't urban developed, like our rural, residential, and agricultural uh, zone, absolutely could have chickens. A good visual to to keep in mind is uh, I ninety five. Pretty much between I-95 and the river is considered the, the urban area, can have chickens. Other side of 95, the more rural, generally can have chickens out there. All right. That's, thanks, Jeff. That's helpful. So my question for you, Patty, is are you aware of any issues where people keeping chickens, assuming that they're you know, engaging in proper maintenance uh, procedures, uh, are presenting a public health hazard for surrounding areas? No, I'm not. Okay. Anybody else have any questions for Patty? Okay, thank you very much. Dave, are we now ready to close the uh, public portion of the uh, hearing? Uh, the applicant should have a chance for a rebuttal, I would say. Ms. Ms. Martin, you, you've got the chance to make a rebuttal. Okay. Um, the only thing I want to state is that I've lived at my property for 11 years and I've had rats there for at least seven. Um, they, it was more plentiful this year for whatever reason. I don't know if it was because of all the rain we had this year that there was just an influx, but I've always had one or two at my bird feeders in the backyard under my wood pile. And I've never had chickens in my backyard until this spring and they were there before I got the chickens. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out was that the avian flu is only associated with, according to the CDC, waterfowl, not chickens. So that has no bearing on, uh, um, no concern. There shouldn't be a concern of avian flu where these are chickens and not waterfowl. They're not geese or ducks or things like that. And that was the only thing that I had to, to add. Questions from Ms. Martin? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Now, time to close the public portion. That's okay. Your it's your prerogative. Yeah. Well, then, then uh, we'll close the public portion of the uh, hearing and turn this over to the board for discussion. And just again, for um, process purposes, and Dave, I want to I want you to correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, what we should do and discuss is vote on three questions. Number one. Uh, has there been a has the applicant met the burden of showing that uh, CJ suffers from an applicant uh, from a handicap? Number two, uh, is the requested accommodation necessary uh, for him to enjoy the uh, the benefits of residing in the property? And then number three, is the requested accommodation reasonable? Did I get that right? I would just uh, rephrase the second element that you just spoke. Um, the accommodation is necessary to afford the person an equal opportunity to use and enjoy a dwelling. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And um, uh, those would be the three questions. And then I would suggest that once those three are voted on, then a, a, an overall vote be taken at the end, which is basically just based on mathematics. Right. In other words, the applicant has to have satisfied all three elements right. in order for the uh, 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 accommodation to be uh, allowed. To be, to be to have uh, satisfied the, if you satisfy the, all three elements then you can then the application can succeed understood yeah. thank you Dave so let me uh, open up to the board for discussion on uh, issue number one whether or not the applicant has met the burden of demonstrating that uh, CJ uh, has a handicap under the uh, relevant laws and ordinances I think they've demonstrated that Agree. Okay, then I'll entertain a motion. Uh, I move to find that the applicant uh, is handicapped within the meaning of the Fair Housing Act. And a second. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 And it is unanimous. Uh, so we'll move on to question number two. 
which is whether or not the uh, requested application, uh, excuse me, requested accommodation is necessary for the reasons that Dave stated that I <laughs> that I won't reiterate. Uh, I can help with the language on the motion if if it's needed. Yeah, it's in the it's in the yes board. yes. Uh, so um, the floor is open to the board for discussion. Sure. I, so this is the place that I have some some questions I'd like to discuss a little bit. I, there is no question in my mind that the chickens are valuable for CJ and that they're good animals and well maintained based on the the conversations we've had today. If they were being kept in a place where they were currently allowed by ordinance, there'd be no question, right? Um, I, I guess the piece that I'm concerned about for the burden on the applicant is the extent to which they've demonstrated that chickens in particular are necessary to make the accommodation or the dwelling equal uh, for this particular instance. As I was talking during the, the question session, I read the letter from the physician to be, in my opinion, explicitly trying not to say that they are prescribing chickens. There's a description of ESAs and from feedback from uh, the applicant, from uh, some of the other folks that have chimed in, there seem to be other animals that might fit that that would fit under our ordinance. For, for example, other things that they already have in the home even as well. Um, so if there are options that do fit within the ordinance that also fit within what's being prescribed by CJ's caregivers, it seems to me that the accommodation may not be strictly necessary under the letter of the law. Uh, but there may be other ways to consider what necessary is or how this works. Um, and so I'm very interested to talk about it, but that's the burden of proof piece that I'm missing when I look at those three points. Um, I have some thoughts because I, I got where you were going with yeah. your questions. Um, the way I read the letter is the doctor's prescribing an ESA and that's qualified by that will assist CJ in coping with his disabilities. And I think from the letter, as well as some of the other materials, what kind of ESA will assist CJ um, is more specific. And so was, when I put that together with um, Amy specifically requesting chickens and then presenting how other animals would be more burdensome and actually uh, detract from the therapeutic effect. That's how I put those pieces together to make chickens in particular necessary. Anybody else? Here, here's my take on that particular provision. And I think my analysis is along similar lines as yours, that I, I read the doctor's letter the same way, basically saying that um, uh, 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 an emotional support animal would be uh, beneficial uh, for CJ. Uh, Amy has done research and uh, she's suggesting chickens and I think chickens are, are fine, but she's not specifically saying that CJ needs chickens. So looking at that, I'm, as I view our job in looking at whether or not there should be a variance. I think that the variance, if there's gonna be a variance, it needs to be the least deviation from what the ordinance requires as is possible. So if, for example, if a dog uh, or a therapy dog uh, would provide the same level of assistance to CJ, that we should deny the application because it's not necessary that CJ, CJ could have the equal opportunity to enjoy the benefits of the property with an emotional support animal that is not in violation of the ordinance. But what I found elsewhere in the record, both from what we've heard from witnesses and also from Ms. Martin's submission uh, to us is that the other animals uh, do not, basically don't do the trick for him. And that the chickens 
fulfill the need that a dog, a cat, a hamster uh, do not because of his particular situation. So, um, you know, like I said, if if the evidence in this record were that a dog could fulfill that function, I would vote that it's not necessary. But I think the evidence in this record is to the contrary. So that's that's the way I view this record. So in other words, I mean, merely because the the letter prescribing an ESA seems ambiguous doesn't mean that the burden of proof about the chickens being necessary for CJ hasn't been met elsewhere in the packet and with you know people's testimony here today, right? So right. yeah, I, th I think I agree. One additional thought I had. Um to your point, Ed, about deviating as minimally as possible and also taking into considera consideration some of the neighbors' concerns is when I think about necessary, is, is there a, a limit, like an unlimited number of chickens being necessary versus a, a limitation on the number that both minimizes the deviation from the ordinance, but also meets the the actual need. And so I think if I understand correctly, something we can do is be specific in, in the variance with a number so that, you know, that maybe quells some anxieties about some slippery slopes, um, but also still meets the, the need that I think has been presented. I, I had that same issue. And I think that falls under the reasonableness as opposed mm -hmm. to the, um, necessity issue. So I think we can address that under item three, but as long as we're on that issue, Dave, one thing I want to ask you is can we impose conditions such as no more than six chickens and also limit the requested variance from 6511 such that it doesn't deprive the health officer of jurisdiction to determine if there is a, a health issue presented by the chickens on the premises. With regard to your second question, I'll deal with that first. Uh, I, I think you certainly can uh, indicate that the um, accommodation does not affect the public health officer's ability to go in and make a determination and, uh, and an order if it uh, affects the public health. I, I believe the applicant even stated that in answering a question. Um, my concern was that the application itself says I want a variance from 6510 and 6511, and that if we did not, if we did not put a limitation on what the variance from 6511, how far that would go, that that we could essentially be making a decision that would limit the jurisdiction of uh, the health officer. That's correct. That, and that's why I brought that out early on with a question about the, uh, the scope of, of what the request was. Okay. And um, I heard the answer being that, that the, the request did not involve the second and later sentences in 6511, but only the first sentence. And then your first question, can you limit the number? What was your first question? Uh, put a limit on the on the number of chickens. And it, and it kind of goes to you know my concern about the record here that the application says I'm asking for a variance from 6510, and in order to meet the reasonableness prong of this, can we say it would be reasonable to have no more than six chickens? Female chickens. Female chickens. I would say that that, in order to satisfy the reasonableness prong, that would be something that you could specify in your decision. Okay, thanks, Dave. But, but my question is, why do we even need 6511? Uh, because she was concerned that if, you know, if she lost one or more of the chickens and she got chicks, that she'd have to raise them inside for a period of time before they could go outside and then the other concern of you know you know short term issues relating to weather uh conditions that you know technically you know if if it was 40 below in a blizzard and she brought them inside she'd be in violation of the 
but ordinance. only if she put them in the cellar, basement, or attic. Right. True. Okay. Um, we we have not yet moved on from item number two. <laughs> And so we, we can talk about that some more when we get, get to item number three. So does anybody else have any other comments, questions, or discussions about the necessity prong? Then I'll entertain a motion. Can, so yeah, ahead, so if could we do a motion that due to the CJ's disability, it's necessary to afford him? Yes. Okay. Do, do you want to make that motion? I do. <laughs> okay. okay. Due to CJ's disability, it is necessary to afford that person or to uh, use and enjoy his dwelling. I'm a little confused by the wording. Okay. I, help us out. The, the, yeah, the, help us out. <laughs> the element that needs to be satisfied is that the accommodation is necessary to afford the person an equal opportunity to use and enjoy a dwelling. So I would suggest that the motion be made using that phrasing. Okay. It's just a phrase. Okay. But can I still put due to? Sure. Okay. So due to CJ's uh, disability, the Fair Housing Act, <clears throat> an accommodation requesting necessary to afford that he and an equal opportunity to use and enjoy his dwelling. That. So, so the, the motion is that the requested application, I'm sorry, the requested accommodation is necessary to, for him to enjoy the, here's where I always forget the language there. Uh, it, I, I think what you're trying to say is that <laughs> in the motion is that due to his disability, uh, uh, the accommodation you, you, your motion is that the that the applicant has satisfied the element that the accommodation is necessary to afford cj an equal opportunity to use and enjoy a dwelling right. is that what you want your motion to be okay okay that that's good because dave's going to write up the findings of fact. Yeah. <laughs> so i want to make sure As that. <laughs> okay so there's there's a motion is there a second we'll moved and seconded any further uh discussion all those in favor say aye. Aye. And it's unanimous. Okay, so let's move on to <laughs> move on to item number three is whether or not the requested accommodation is uh, reasonable. So I'll open up the floor to the board for comments. To the point uh, you have already discussed, I think this would be the place to describe whatever we can in terms of limits for the reasonable accommodation. I think numbers make sense. Um, sex of the chickens makes sense given some of the other things that we've described species, species sure i mean I, I think limiting it specifically to chickens and how we define those may be necessary especially as concerns raised about slippery slopes and those sorts of things if we can define it for this particular property for this particular use i think that would be most helpful um the other thing i kind of wondered about what kind of language we could use is in terms of cleanliness i think it's amazing that so many people showed up to say how clean and fantastic it is that is not always the case with yeah, chickens right. and so if there are ways for us to write language so that in order for the accommodation to be reasonable they must be maintained to a certain standard i recognize that gets very messy in terms of, of what kind of language we can use there but i think it might be useful in this case to make sure that it stays reasonable over time and as things might develop and, and those sorts of things. Further? But I mean, just to be clear, like the variance we're granting is for this particular property, right? Like I think some of the concerns I heard were that, well, the, the slippery slope is that we're changing the, the ordinance for the city as a whole, but that's not what we're doing. And anyone else who wanted to have chickens on their property would have to go through the same process. So and I appreciate like the effect of like, the precedent we're setting here, and we ought to be as specific as possible. But I do think it's important to emphasize that you know this we're not changing the ordinance right. in the city as a whole or anything like that, right? I mean that's yeah. Um, and, and for example, if somebody were to request uh, a variance to have six chickens in um, in an apartment building, let's say, um, that's a different situation with potentially different factors that we'd have to consider that may or may not be 
reasonable under the circumstances uh, with a different property. And if that variance were to come uh, before us, we would consider consider them all on a case by case basis. Yep. And can we also limit it to CJ? Because we don't want it to go to the next owner that they can have chickens. I, I was going to speak on that if, if okay. I could have the floor. Um, the request that's before you is a request by Amy Martin on behalf of, of CJ Martin. And so if you make a finding that the applicant has satisfied the three requirements, then, and as I understand it, the request is for six chickens. Okay. So the, the, uh, the granting of the accommodation would be for this applicant at this property. It wouldn't just be for this property. If this applicant were to sell the property, the accommodation is, and then move away, the accommodation would be gone. It wouldn't go with the property. And if it is specifically for this applicant. And if they were to move to a different property in Bangor, in the URD district, and still want to keep the chickens, they'd have to reapply. That's right. The, the The accommodation would be provided for this applicant with respect to this property only, and, and if so, it's and, granted. And, and unlike uh, other variances, this variance doesn't run with the property. Correct. Okay. Other comments, questions? The only other thought I have is to Jordan's point of, well, I think striving for cleanliness is you know, something we'd want to include, I would worry about vagueness in that language. And I don't think that's something that, I don't know that there's any language that we could use that provides an objective standard the way like concrete numbers or sex does. And so while I think that would be great, I don't know that that's something we can like realistically achieve. Yes, this, and this may be a question for Jeff, um, but you know, are there mm. processes for people to raise concerns about cleanliness or those sorts of things that could be used in this case. Really, all I'm thinking about is if, God forbid, years down the line, things have changed at home and things get problematic, what, what kind of recourse do neighbors have to raise concerns beyond there are too many chickens or they're the wrong sex, mm -hmm. um, that, that this accommodation may have fallen out of its reasonableness? So are there ways that citizens could raise complaints? Jeff, I, am, I think I am looking to you. Absolutely, yes. Um, we are a uh, department of uh, complaints. <laughs> so that would not be anything new. 992-4280. You got the number on there for us. Great. That I mean, I, I may have just sort of answered my own question, but if there's a way for the city to be able to address concerns at the property that fall within and sort of outside the variance, then... I mean, I think sort of the broader question, it's it's broader than the 6511 issue that we were talking about. Right. That nothing that we would do tonight would deprive yeah. the city of jurisdiction to enforce any issues relating to public health. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ed, may I have the floor a second? As long as the board doesn't grant an accommodation with respect to the second sentence right. Of, right. Six, right. of 6511, which is the one that says that the city health officer shall have the authority to order removal of fowl, goat, sheep, cattle, or swine of any kind from any premises in the city, regardless of location, whenever the health officer finds that keeping such animals at the premises threatens the public health. You want to make sure that you are not granting the accommodation with respect to that sentence, because if you do, then that is taking away one of the enforcement mechanisms that's built into the, right. to the ordinance. Yeah, thanks, thanks Dave. Okay. Can, go ahead. can we have a vote separately for 6510 and 6511? I think uh, you already voted that they satisfied the elements, but you didn't specify which section. So could well, we for the overall vote? For, on the first two elements, I mean. Um, I, mean I, think we, we could, I think we could. Clarify for the record. I, I think yeah. what we could do is. And I'm not going to make the motion because I'm the chair, but I'll make a suggestion that we could make a motion to find that the proposed accommodation um, is reasonable with the limitation that there shall be no more than six chickens on the property and that 
the variance is granted only regarding 6511, only to the extent uh, that they're being granted a variance from the, pro, the, the first paragraph, which- The, the first sentence. Yeah, first sentence. First sentence, thank you. Yeah. yeah. So, so we it sounds like what- Into the vote on number three. Right. Um, so you, you're suggesting that the applicant satisfied the first two elements with respect to both sections? Yes. Okay. And then on the, okay. I mean, it's the yeah. same yeah, it makes sense to me. Yeah. yeah. For, for one and two, for both. Right. Ordinance. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'd like to move that the applicant has uh, met the reasonableness expectation, met the burden proof for the reasonableness expectation as it relates to ordinance section 6510 and the first sentence of 6511, but explicitly not the, the remaining part of 6511, and that it's reasonable under the expectation of six or fewer hens at that location. Okay. Moved and seconded. Any further comments, questions, or discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 And it is unanimous. Okay. Do we need an overhaul? Final vote. All three together? That's oh, fine. yes, we do. We Final do. Final thank vote. you. Thank yeah. you, George. Uh, would someone like to make a motion to uh, grant the requested variance with the limitations set forth in the finding of fact on uh, item number three, the reasonableness? I'm, I'm, uh, motion to grant the variance uh with the limitation um that we just voted on for uh the third prong of the um determinative test it's moved and <laughs> i second okay. moved and seconded uh comments questions and dave is that specific enough for you to draft the findings of fact i think so yes good uh any further discussion no. all those in favor say aye aye ms martin your application is approved And item number four is other business. Does anybody have any further business to bring before the board? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. And a second? Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Meetings adjourned. Thank you, everybody.